Live from Austin, Texas, it's time for Night Shift. On the show this week, U.S. Congressman Lloyd Doggett. City of Austin Mayor Steve Adler. Our musical guest this week, Musicians Advisory Panelist, Frederico Seven. With community updates from Executive Director Pat Buckta. And of course, I am your host, Nakia. And now it's time for Night Shift. Every Wednesday at 7 o'clock, right here at ATX Musicians. Oh my goodness. That never stops being exciting. Hey, it's Nikia, and this is Night Shift. Wednesdays at 7 o'clock uh, right here at ATX Musicians on Facebook. Um, and you could be watching this on YouTube. Uh, that's okay. Um, so we've got some great guests tonight, as you heard, um, and I want to talk uh, to them. But first, before we do that, I uh, just wanted to take a moment to say shout out to bars like Saxon Pub, uh, Continental Club, Sea Boys, I believe One Two One. And some others, you know, we know that bars have been given the the go ahead to start opening at 25 percent. And um, the, the the facts are of what we're hearing from our venue owners um, that are doing the responsible thing and saying, hey, it's not really ideal for us to do this yet for a multitude of reasons. Um, it's not safe. Uh, it's not economical for us um, to try to run this business at 25 percent. Uh, you know, and these clubs we're talking about are are indoor clubs, um, which you know is certainly uh, a, a lot riskier if if you're a musician and you're trying to play a show. Uh, you know, in this situation, you don't want to be kind of indoors with a lot of people, right? Um, and even if it is 25%, you know, we've seen folks in our musicians group on here on Facebook talking about you know just how far when you're singing, you know that that air travels, that those molecules travel, right? So um, definitely want to err on the side of caution. Um, we have seen some folks, of course, um, who did not see these photos uh, and video floating around this week of bands and fans, um, you know, coming out strong, saying that they're not scared and they're trying to live their lives. Um, and, you know, it is really a free country. You really can do that, and you're certainly welcome to. Our organization is definitely encouraging musicians to only, if you're going to play a gig, only consider one in an outdoor venue where the um, the venue owners and staff are taking every precaution to avoid any kind of, of risk of you know, infection, anything. Um, and we know that there are some venues that are planning those things right now, and they are taking those precautions. And we look to them to see what happens um, because it is definitely we're still in the middle of this. Right. So, um, again, if you've got questions about whether or not you should play this gig, the first thing you should ask yourself is, am I being paid? Am I being paid fairly? Uh, is it safe? Um, you know, nobody should be playing free shows ever. Right, because there's never been a worse time to try to play for exposure, because you really could die from that. Um, so enough of that. Uh, our first guest tonight is Congressman Lloyd Doggett. Congressman Doggett represents families from Austin to San Antonio. He is the chairman of the Health Subcommittee on the House and Ways and Means Committee, where he put uh, works to put patients first, cut out-of-pocket costs, and ensure health care coverage for all. We like that. He is a longtime supporter of the Austin music scene. I know he has my CD in his uh, CD changer. Congressman Doggett works to protect federal funding for the arts. And during this pandemic, he has advocated for more resources for our music industry professionals. Please join me in welcoming to Night Shift, Congressman Lloyd Doggett. Well, thanks so much, Nakia. Uh, it's great to see you. I'd love to hear you. I've been listening to uh, you actually on my iPhone uh, going back and forth to D.C. Uh, I really do need some distraction uh, <laughs> doing it uh, that way. Uh, and I, I particularly appreciate what you were just saying about putting health first, because 
that is so very important. We can talk about that some. I think I know you've got some questions for me. Yeah. Uh, I, I appreciate not only your music, but the fact that you and so many Austin artists have participated with the Recording Academy when we've done Grammys in my district. Uh, and uh, all that you and Pat are doing uh, during this tough time to keep uh, hope alive. Uh, Thank you so course, much for saying that. Well, you know, uh, and we got hit first in the music community. Of all the areas in Austin that we care about, uh, what's happened to our music community because of the very painful but correct decision that Mayor Adler made about shutting down South by, we felt that economic cost there first. Uh, this is a plague that is uh, robbing uh, many people, musicians of their livelihood, and it's robbing all the rest of us of the joy and sometimes pain of coming together and sharing uh, with good music uh, all the, the joys and tribulations of life Absolutely. Uh, in so many good venues around here. And so it's great that you've got a series to keep hope alive and keep the community united. I think these streaming sessions are really great. And I was also pleased that while uh, the Trump administration is very much asleep at the wheel, that our friend Ray is uh, has recovered from COVID and he's back in action. Absolutely. And the goal here, as you said, is that we gather now in this strange way so that when we meet again physically, we'll all be there and we won't yeah. leave anybody behind that we forgot about uh, that suffered from this because they were desperate to perform in an overcrowded, unsafe location. Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, it's, it's like every time in totally different circumstances that you've got an emergency, uh, the legislative action that's taken place uh, in Washington has been hurried. It's been excessive in some areas and has been insufficient in others. Uh, members are scattered all across the country, just like your members are scattered across Central Texas who are participating tonight. But it's difficult to communicate. We have one conference call after another. And when I went back to Washington last Friday uh, for this brief session we had, uh, you know, you can mainly try to recognize a member under their mask uh, because we're masked and separated and there's not much opportunity for interaction. Right. Uh, the bill that we took up last Friday was a whole 1,800 pages with a uh, tidy price tag of about $3 trillion. Uh, I think as it relates to folks that are participating tonight, the most immediate benefit is that we provide for another $1,200 uh, a person uh, stimulus like the last one. To be up to 6000 per family. And it provides substantial funding to our cities and counties and states that have all been hard hit. And with some of that funding, they may be able to do some things to plug the gap here in Austin that hasn't been done directly in the federal bill, particularly in the music and music venue area. Uh, also, uh, action was taken concerning unemployment. Uh, the bill proposes to uh, extend beyond July 31st to actually January 31st of next year the $600 uh, per week, up to $600 per week uh, pay payments. Sure. Uh, but, you know, while this is true, uh, Mitch McConnell, the self-described Grim Reaper, uh, has uh, suggested essentially let them eat cake or in his more modern words, let them go bankrupt when it yeah. comes to our governmental units. And I think as a practical matter, what we have is we've laid out a negotiating position and probably no action until sometime next month and unclear what position Trump will ultimately take and how much they'll push to try to solve some of this. Right. Uh, and then, you know, there's another big problem, and that is uh, the distance between here and Washington. Uh, plenty of time to listen to your good music, but the distance between our legislating something and actually getting it implemented can be as wide as the problems that so many musicians and other gig workers have faced uh, in trying to work with the Texas Workforce Commission. I think they bungled this for everyone. Uh, so many people I've heard from that have suffered through this exasperating mess, if they finally break through and find a human being or they break through. Uh oh, we lost you. We lost Congressman Doggett there. 
Let's see if we can get it back. Making them eligible. Oh, there you go. We yeah, lost. There we go. Are we together? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, so, I'm glad, you, I'm glad you brought up the unemployment thing that I wanted to say. Is there any, that is something that we're we're hearing musicians from the get go have you know struggled so hard to get through, struggled so exactly. well, much to to make it work. What can be done to make significant and permanent changes in that current unemployment program so that musicians and other gig workers are included in the future? It's it's a really tough question. And uh, there's several aspects of it. I haven't found any place that's really handled that well. We, for example, we had this problem uh, that continues about Texas Workforce Commission not considering 1099s, only W-2s. And many people have mainly 1099s. I have pressed on that, tried to get that considered, uh, didn't get it included in this bill. They're saying they don't really know how to do that. Another issue is... Uh, on regular unemployment insurance, the employer pays an unemployment insurance premium to help finance the fund. Uh, how do we do that for the self-employed, for the gig worker going forward? Right. Uh, and then an additional problem is this is a state federal program. And right. Governor Abbott has already said, hey, I'm, no matter how much the unemployment insurance fund is diminished, uh, I'm not going to raise taxes to refill it. Right. Uh, and so we will probably face some opposition from the uh, the the state uh, governors, particularly in Republican states. Uh, but in short, we got to find a way because the new statistics show that almost 40 percent of American workers are gig workers. Absolutely. Not traditional employees. And uh, we can't leave out half the people. Right. I mean, I think it's 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 an interesting place that we're in. Um, you are um, you're certainly able to remember when you know deliveries of goods were a big thing years and years ago, and then it yeah. shifted. Right, we saw that that people wanted to go out and drive their own cars and go places, but now it's we're kind of back in the golden age of service industry. It is people doing these jobs that you know it, it makes our lives more convenient, but without those folks so many things don't happen the way that they mm -hmm. need to happen. And it's so important for musicians, especially as you said, it, every one of us are working off 1099s. If we're getting um, a W-2 from somebody, it's because it's our day job. Exactly. And it allows you to perform. Multiple day to perform. Right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm glad to hear you say that. I know it's difficult, but it, you know, the truth is, is that you have always been an advocate for musicians and the music industry folks. And so I do trust that you will do your best to make it happen. Um, and you also mentioned earlier uh, about, you know, finding assistance uh, for music venues. Um, you know, our venues obviously need to needed assistance if we're to remain the live music capital of the world and continue to support our music economy. Um, Last week, I believe you signed on to a letter supporting independent music venues. Right. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what's being done on the federal level um, to do things like that to help save music? Yeah, yeah. No, not enough. You know, uh, losing venues has been a problem here in Austin uh, long before we had COVID-19. And this has just accelerated the process. And we know that a number of small businesses are probably not going to come back. The question is, uh, do our venues come back? Uh, I, I live in East Austin. My office is uh, right downtown in the old federal building. So I've got uh, the Red River uh, District right in the middle. Uh, and I know there are challenges there. What I hope is that we get enough uh, local and uh, state assistance out that we get some flexibility and added support for action at the local level to help uh, some of these units, uh, some of these venues survive. And yeah. of course, we've worked with a number of companies and continue to do so on programs like the Paycheck Protection Plan and the uh, uh, in the loans that are available through the Small Business Administration to try to help them get by. But it, it will be a continuing challenge, just like unemployment. And we need your advice about how we proceed uh, on unemployment as well. We continue to work with a number of individual musicians and are available to do that. We can't change TWC, but we can 
advocate, and that's what sure. we're trying to do here. And I, I, I do want to say for our viewers at home, uh, Congress, Congress and Doggett's office, you did reach out to us and asked us for specific instances of where musicians were struggling to, to right. reach TWC and we're having issues. And we not only forwarded you those, but then we in turn invited a text force workforce commissioner onto the show. Good who, for you. Who came on and, and, and was telling us that they were doing their best to try to keep up, but that they, they understood that there were some issues and it was very helpful for us to be able to utilize that um, moment that you helped us say, no, we should just go directly to them and, and get yeah. them on the show. So that's very helpful. You know, something else that you mentioned at, at the beginning when we're talking about healthcare, you know, obviously um, organizations like HAM and SIMS here in Austin, they depend on live music events to help them raise money. For instance, right. HAM has their annual Ray Benson birthday party during South by Southwest. From the time that South by Southwest was canceled until about mid-April, that meant that 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 Ham lost about four hundred and fifty thousand dollars in funds that they would normally raise at those events. Um, so, as an advocate for health coverage, why are these types of organizations that that do private fundraising that help care for musicians and other vulnerable populations? Why is that so important to Austin's economy and to other economies around the state? Well, of course, keeping us as the live music capital of the world. Uh, modest as we are, uh, is uh, is vital to our economy. It's attracting uh, people to our tech industries. It's attracting tourism. And mainly, it just adds to the joy of life of living right here in Austin. Uh, and so HAM, uh, I participate every year in the HAM Day in, uh, in November when uh, people participate and uh, uh, send a message to uh, the Ray Benson virtual program this past Saturday. Uh, HAM does some great work in the health insurance area, as SIMS does in the mental health area. I believe they both have qualified for uh, some help, or at least HAM has, on paycheck protection, but it's not nearly enough to make up for the loss. And so we need to continue backing them uh, and they and backing musicians to get uh, health care. Uh, working Absolutely. with groups like Foundation Communities, we just recently did an event uh, together with Foundation and HAM to talk about how can we get out more uh, health insurance coverage, particularly for people that have lost a job and lost insurance, how they can sign up now, but right. also how we can get enrollment and how we can improve the Affordable Care Act so that the tax credits are bigger and people can afford insurance at a time they need health care so much when sure. we're all threatened by this epidemic. And absolutely, that is one of the biggest uh, challenges that HAM, as a service provider and SIMS, really prov um, face is because musicians who aren't working, um, who don't have any other income coming in, they don't. we don't want to see uh, musicians like that being forced to choose between their health premiums and their rent or their food. Exactly. You know, yes. and it's just not a, a fair situation at all. Um, and, and uh, luckily, Ham is doing everything they can. Sims is doing everything they can to stay afloat and keep things going. But you know that the reality is if those organizations go away, the, the money that they are saving taxpayers by keeping musicians off of welfare and, and off of, of Medicaid, et cetera, that will be a huge hit to the taxpayers if musicians have to go back. Absolutely. And it'll be a huge hit if we uh, have musicians that uh, wait too long to get the care they need yes. and are unable to perform and continue to, you know, be able to contribute to the, the essence of what Austin's all about. Yeah, absolutely. And, and on that note, you've been a champion of music in Austin for decades. Um, and so I wanted to ask you, what is one of your favorite concert experiences that you've had in Austin? It could be, you know, over the last year or a, of, of all well, time. Well, un unfortunately, between gerrymandering and going back and forth to uh, D.C., <laughs> uh, I have to listen to you too much on my phone and not in person. I know. Uh, but uh, I'll, I'll mention a couple with a political edge that go back many years. I have uh, hanging in my office a poster uh, from a group called Frida and the Fire Dogs, a uh, former iteration of Marsha Ball, 
<laughs> and it says on there that uh, it's a, it was a fundraiser for me as a young 26-year-old uh, candidate for state yeah. senate. Uh, you can tell from looking at me that was a couple of years ago. Uh, and uh, Marsha, uh, we charge for that fundraiser a whole dollar and 50 cents a head. Wow. Uh, and uh, a little after that, when I was in the state Senate, uh, it's difficult to imagine now as everybody's abandoning a landline. But if you lived in rural Travis County and there was more of it then, uh, you had to pay for the telephone pole and the lines to get uh, any service out there. Sure. I was having a lot of people like out toward the lake uh, asking for help and we would intervene. Well, there's a fellow that moved down here from Tennessee that we helped uh, and we were successful in getting him a telephone out there. And after that, I heard he was a fairly good musician. So I called on him to perform. And he did so a couple of times. Uh, and his name was Willie. Oh, uh, man, that's so, great. Uh, more recently, uh, up at the Library of Congress, we honored him with the Gershwin Prize for his lifetime of service. I mean, uh, but whether, whether you're as famous as Willie or just starting out with your first gigs, you're important to what's happening here with music in Austin. And uh, just know that we want to try and be supportive. And I'm glad, I know you're going to hear from Mayor Adler. You know, he's got a really tough job. I think he's done it well. Uh, he's trying to put health first. Uh, he's had the courage to make some decisions that were politically difficult to make. Absolutely. The kind of wish that Trump and Abbott had made to keep us safe. And as you, as you look at where we are now, uh, Nakia, I think, we're paying the price for the delay, the denial, and the continued deception. And so when people can't get out like they want to, when they're worried about their health, uh, consider how this came about and how by pulling together in the way you're doing tonight, in the way that I know Mayor Adler and the council are trying to do, somehow we're going to get over this, uh, but we have some tough months still ahead of us. Well, I'll tell you how we can get over it, and that is get out and vote. And well, for sure, mail in your ballots. If we yep. if, if we can keep mail in ballots, that'll be great. Um, we have got to get people out to vote. And our Executive Director Pat Buck is going to be coming up in a minute to talk a little bit about what's coming up next week. We got some stuff uh, to unveil about that. Thank you so much for being on the show, Congressman Doggett. Uh, I can't yeah, wait to see you in person again. I look Thank forward to another CD. Okay, Bye. I'll send you one your way. Good. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, fantastic. Uh, Congressman Lloyd Doggett, um, you know, the last time I think I saw him in person was at David Messier's studio. Uh, the Recording Academy Texas chapter presented him um, with an award, and we did that at Same Sky Studios, and um, he's just such a, a sweetheart of a, of a man. We're so grateful to, to have him in office and representing um, folks. Uh, and that's very sweet for of my husband to pipe in. Um, uh, don't you just love my husband's um, uh, avatar there? He is uh, a Jedi with, with Yoda on his shoulder. <laughs> um, so uh, speaking of Jedis, um, I'm going to show you this this video that Executive uh, Pat, Executive Director Pat Buckta put together for our friends over the Long Center because last week I was a guest on their live stream show called Long Story Short, and um, I got to speak with their uh, uh, head of campus operations over there, Catlin Whittington. Uh, we talked a lot about what we've been up to over here at Austin, Texas Musicians. Um, but we also premiered uh, this uh, little video here. So we're going to roll it for you right now. It's time for our voices to be heard. No one wants to live or work in an Austin without music. Musicians have a very powerful voice at City Hall. Today is the first public forum about the live music fund that's happening at City Hall. For the first time, we really have a, a great uh, structure in place to communicate with our music community on the street level. We can activate our base to find out what it is that musicians, you know, really do want out of this. An added music venue designation will open the gateway for other tools through which our music community is supported. What would you say to musicians who are really scared right now? Live music is part of the soul of this city and we can't afford to lose it or we'll lose a large part of what of what austin is 
you're part of my constituent base and we really want to make sure that we're there for you. Everything I'm going to talk about tonight is no cost and I'm going to make sure that you all have resources about how you can connect to us. We are going to be processing those claims to see if we can help musicians and independent contractors, artists and gig, gig workers uh, receive that pandemic unemployment assistance. Take the time to sit down and focus 100% on that you know, creative process and, and write new material. I quote my normal rate because I've, I've decided that that's what I'm worth. So when is it safe to start playing private games? Again? Yeah, yeah, that that's the $64,000 question. Uh, Wait, is that how much you guys get? <laughs> Time stands still for me when I'm playing for these folks. I, they're, they're, they, they need it, and you just feel good. It's the end of the year. We're celebrating the holidays with Ham. We're going to talk to them and find out all of the great things they've been up to this year. If you see a blind person or anybody with a disability, don't be afraid to approach them and talk to them. Executive Director Pat Buckta, there he is. Good evening, how are you? I'm good, my friend. Great job on that video. Thank you so much for the work you put into that. Sure. Uh, I know you had to go through and download a bunch of video and edit it all together. Uh, very nice, thank you so much. It's so funny, you know, I spent 30 years trying to get out of the TV industry and, and here we are again, producing TV shows editing videos. I can't get away, and I love it. I love well, it. Well, I'm glad to have you here. Uh, get us into this community update tonight, Pat. Absolutely, Nikia. Uh, so, you know, we have some really exciting updates uh, to share with you guys tonight. I'm going to take my glasses off, Nikia, because I know, you know <laughs> the light's been reflecting in my face the last few weeks, and I want to get right into it and talk about the big topic of this evening's show, and that is the relief efforts coming to our music community, okay? Uh, you know, we just heard from Congressman Doggett, that was so cool, about some of the work being done on the federal level to throw a lifeline to the commercial music sector. Okay, so now I'd like to provide an overview of aid efforts happening here in the city of Austin. Uh, we're gonna break those down even more in just a few minutes with Mayor Adler, uh, but first let's get a picture of what's at play, right? So uh, let's let's go back just a little bit uh, to two months ago, and within an hour of attending that fateful press conference now in which uh, the mayor announced the cancellation of South by Southwest, uh, we were called into the office of Council Member Flanagan to begin collaborating on ways to bring aid to musicians, uh, venues, and gig workers who would lose income during South by. Uh, I don't know that at that time anyone understood, you know, how long this thing would last and how profoundly that we'd all be affected. So those early efforts grew into larger efforts within the next weeks. And soon enough, you know, council had passed item 91. Uh, this was an initiative brought forth by council member Flanagan that would charge the city to quickly explore solutions for this growing need, right? So item 91 is a great example of how our unified voices can make a difference. Uh, so Austin, Texas musicians and so many of our nonprofit, uh, music nonprofit partners join forces to send a letter of support to all council members, urging them to adopt this first step. And within weeks after that adoption, we had the first piece of the puzzle, uh, the Austin Music Disaster Relief Fund introduced by council member Tovo. Uh, and of course, you know, we're gonna bring Mayor Adler on in just a few minutes and we'll hear more about how that fund is gonna work from him. 
but the main takeaway from this is, is that council has dedicated $1.5 million to go directly into musicians' pockets to help them with basic needs assistance. So tomorrow, uh, that's tomorrow morning, council will presumably vote to pass item 76. Okay, this will uh, put the music disaster relief program in motion very quickly. And, uh, you know, from reviewing tomorrow's council agenda document, we've been able to determine that the there are some uh, key dates coming up very soon that we want all of our musicians to be very aware of. Okay, so next week, the official announcement of the program, that's going to happen on May 27th. Uh, and with that announcement, uh, they will introduce all the city guidelines and application questions. Um, you know, after that, musicians will have a couple of weeks or so to get all their uh, things in line to be able to prepare to apply, right? So applications uh, will open on June 8th and they will close on June 12th. Uh, so, you know, that's a little window of time. And, you know, our job, Austin, T Texas Musicians, uh, we have been selected as one of the community champions to get the word out and make sure all Austin musicians are aware of this program and ready to apply. And so you better believe that we are going to do that. You're going to hear a lot more about this uh, from us over the next few weeks. Um, I want to continue and talk about a couple of more things happening on the council agenda tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow is going to continue to be a big day for music at council, uh, as there is expected to pass two more items that will bring aid to our music community. Uh, and one of those I'm really excited about, Mayor Adler's item 95, which will work to grow Austin's commercial music sector now and into the future. Okay, there's a lot of opportunity that this opens up for us. We hope it'll help in making sure that we remain the live music capital of the world, of course, but this will also ensure that we mature into a real music city with real economic development focused specifically toward that purpose. Uh, next up, item 96 answers the big topic, right, that we discussed on Night Shift just last week, and that is how do we save Austin's beloved music venues. Okay, item 96 answers that question with an unprecedented effort coming to our rescue. And it includes some really cool provisions that our partners at the Red River Cultural District and the Music Venue Alliance of Austin uh, have been asking for now for years. Uh, it's gonna be amazing to see these things happen tomorrow. Uh, there's so much uh, happening for music. Uh, and just in a moment here, we're going to hear from Mayor Adler. I can't wait to hear more about uh, his insight to these items. But I want to really underline one last point here uh, before we get to that. We have three items just for music on Council's agenda tomorrow. Now, that is unheard of in any city across the United States. These three items speak to the fact that our city is listening to us, collaborating with us, and making choices with our music community in mind. We have thousands of musicians in Austin, uh, but we've been able to bring one voice to City Hall and that voice is being heard. Uh, so next week, I'll talk about the new musician voter registration program we're rolling out just in time for county elections. And we will learn more about the new Austin, Texas Musicians Pro Membership application that will be available in English and in Spanish. Uh, so again, thank you, Nikia, Congressman Doggett, and Mayor Adler. I am humbled and honored, as always, to serve with you guys. Oh, well, thanks, Pat. That was a that was a good update. There's a lot of information there. Um, we will certainly uh, uh, be cutting this up into smaller segments. For yeah. to watch later if you missed it. Um, so don't forget about that. Uh, and Pat, you mentioned the professional membership application that we opened up. And so let's take a minute uh, while, while we're waiting for Mayor Adler to come from his broadcast yeah. uh, into our broadcast to talk a little bit about that. Um, it is live. We've got um, over 250 um, musicians who have signed up for that. I believe we have, uh, we might even have a banner. 
uh, about that somewhere in here. Um, uh, you can just go to uh, austintexasmusicians.org uh, or atxmusicians.org um, and click the join button uh, and fill out the application. Listen, it's not a short application. We're taking this very seriously. Um, it, it will take you about 20 minutes. We're going to ask you some really um, direct questions about how much money you make uh, playing music professionally, how many shows you play a year, um, what genres that you play in, um, how many bands do you play in, um, you know, what are your main instruments, um, are you currently receiving services from folks like Ham, Sims, or Black Fret or Dawa, are you uh, a member of Black Fret uh, as an artist or um, been nominated in the past or currently nominated, mm -hmm. and the other thing that's exciting about the professional membership application is that we will be working with Black Fret to essentially help them identify bands that might not have made it to their radar yet for their membership. So that's also really exciting news for us. Um, and so there could be some paid performance opportunities that come out of uh, being a member of uh, Austin, Texas musicians, um, or as we're calling it now, a ATXM Pro, um, because we've got a whole bunch of musicians in our Facebook group. If you're not a member of that, please point your browser um, to our Facebook page. Uh, you know, it's just uh, right. Well, you're probably watching this on our Facebook page, but there's a, a group link right there, and you can uh, check us out. That's called Austin, okay. Texas Musicians Community. Um, and we would love to have you in there. We've got over 4,500 members in that private group that both myself um, and for the last year uh, or so, Pat, have personally vetted to make sure these folks live within about 50 miles of Austin. They're playing music in Austin. Um, and that community is really strong. And we see a lot of discussions going on in that community talking about things about these, these venues that are – either declining to reopen or the ones that are pushing forward. Talking about, um, you know, uh, we saw a lot of people rushing into live streams and we began to see businesses booking bands for live streams. So we began talking about what, making sure that, that bands were being compensated fairly for those performances because it's work. We are workers. Yes, we're artists, but we are employed by venues, by you know, uh, folks who are doing private gigs for weddings and and other corporate events, we are workers and we deserve to be paid for the work that we do. Absolutely, yeah, and you know, I think it's uh, important to mention too that you know we, like you said, like you've spent eleven years building this community on Facebook, right? So a lot of people, yeah. you know, were kind of like, well, why do we? You know, we we're doing it all here on the Facebook page. Why do we need to right. you know, throw out this membership application? And you know, the reason we wanted to move in that direction is because you know we're looking at things like the Live Music Fund, and you know, like uh, the disaster relief uh, funds coming, you know, very quickly to our music community. And with every one of those programs, you know, they need definitions of what constitutes a professional musician in Austin. Right. You know, what are the guidelines that really say I'm in this for as a career? You know, I'm in this as a business, and um, you know we need to determine that. Uh, and uh, again, you know, there's no uh, more qualified people to qualify to set up those qualified. Nobody should define musicians except musicians. Right? Exactly. That. Yeah, and, and that is exactly what we've said from the get go. And we've seen the feedback that we've gotten from our members. You know, they believe that the number one thing, the number one and two thing, they're pretty close about neck and neck here, right. is how much money you make from from playing music a year, like a, a percentage being the highest percentage from just playing music. Um, yep. How many gigs you play a year as a as a professional musician in Austin? Now, that doesn't mean that you can't be a professional musician and be uh, a, a music teacher, sure. Or a studio, uh, you know, um, musician, and you're just playing on on records in town. All of that is fine. We're it, just go to atxmusicians.org, click join. We're going to ask you: Do you make money from live gigs, playing uh, studio gigs? Do you also teach? We'll find out all of that information in the process. Um, and while we're talking about it, I'm going to run a, a quick bumper here about. Our professional membership application it only takes about 17 seconds. Hopefully when we come back, we'll have uh, Mayor Adler. Again, he's coming directly from his other uh, uh, 
live stream that he does every night. So if you're watching at home he, uh, and watching him, he'll be he'll be over here as soon as he's done. And if he's not here when we get back, maybe we'll just go ahead and bump up Frederico um, and get him in and start uh, and start the music up, and then we'll we'll work backwards. Stand by. Still no Mayor Adler yet. That's okay. Um, we're gonna we're gonna hop in uh, with Frederico real quick um, and and get Frederico in here. Frederico is one of our musicians advisory panelists, um, and he is a fantastic musician. And we're very excited to have you on the show, Frederico. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing great. I hope you guys can hear me. Uh, what a pleasure to to hear all of the things that you guys are doing for us musicians. So a big shout to all the musicians watching. You guys make this city special. Oh man, we we can't do it without folks like you, Frederico. Um, you know, as a musicians advisory panel member, you're actually working to help build a bridge of communication into underrepresented genres and communities. Can you tell us a little bit more about the Austin World Beat Band Leaders Group that you created and what you hope to achieve? Sure, uh, uh, very much in an organic fashion in which the Austin, Texas Musician Group uh, grew. So there is uh, here an uh, Austin World Musicians group uh, that has almost a thousand people. I was so surprised. Not everybody's a musician, but there is a lot of people who love. Uh, uh, but uh, the term world music is a term that musicians don't, even world musicians don't like it. So we world beat or global music, whatever it is. But the, the idea was that from this organic Facebook group that we had, uh, uh, some cool discussions were happening. And some of these discussions are universal discussions that are happening from musicians like Brennan Temple, for example. And then they trickle down to our scenes, whether it's the Tejano scene, the, 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 the Cumbia scene, the, the Middle Eastern scene. But the reality is our Austin, our beloved Austin is so diverse. And part of the reason that I stay here so long is because of all these amazing musicians that live here. So we just took that group, but we just created a group. Right now we are 15 members, but if anybody watching here is a band leader and plays any kind of like world music, whatever that means for you, uh, uh, look it up because we're just, uh, uh, we are taking these discussions that you guys are having right now with politicians and so forth. And we are, we are kind of hashing it out, how it affects us so that we can be more organized and get feedback back to you guys. I love that. I love seeing that happen. Um, you know, as the city rolls out the music disaster relief package that we were talking about earlier, what do you think needs to be done to reach out to communities of color um, that are uh, so that they're aware of these opportunities? Sure. Um, and I just want to mention that in 2016, for those that don't know, there, is an, uh, there was an Austin Music Census. Uh, so, and that's a very good resource that we have. And and, and, and has informed many of us. So if you look at the Austin Music Census, you're going to see that, for example, there are many female musicians right now that, for, as an example, right, that uh, don't, uh, uh, don't enjoy the very same benefits from the scene that male counterparts. And then, for example, and, and often that's not by, uh, uh, by malice, but it's by this whole system that we live as a society. For example, uh, in the uh, there are some award shows in town that there is no not a Tejano category, but we have many Tejano musicians. So uh, uh, in that sense, I, I, I feel that uh, if we are able to, uh, uh, through musicians, really musicians are in the front lines. So that's why I created this band leader group, uh, the Austin World Beat Band Leaders. Not just myself, uh, 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 but other. Roberto Rigio from Atash and Leticia sure. Garza, so that, uh, so that uh, uh, we can be part of the solution. We, we, are we, we don't want to complain anymore, so if we have to help translate materials, if we have to, to, to do a, a, some, some festivals and neighborhoods that don't usually get live music in Austin, all of that's in the table, so we would love to be part of the solution. So we, we went from complaining and being frustrated to still being frustrated, but now into action. That's right. It is. If you love music, then you got to take action. That is my my new motto. Um, Frederico, we'd love for you to play us a song while we're waiting on Mayor Adler to get in here. Uh, so why don't you tell us about the song you're going to play and then take it away? Thank you. Let's do it. Uh, I am playing a brand new song, uh, so nobody has heard this yet. Uh, it's called Missing My Children. This song is especially for anybody out there, whether it is due to the pandemic 
due to immigration issues, uh, parental alienation, or whatever that may be. If you're missing your child right now, this one is for you. Oh, 
That was great. So that's a brand new song. That's the first time you played it live. Hey, what's up, guys? I got my headphones. Okay, back. good. So that was <laughs> is that the first time you played this live? Yeah, you know, um, as musicians, we're figuring out the streaming world. You know, all all, all of those non musicians watching. There's so many things that musicians are reinventing themselves, right? And I have an amazing band. I have some musicians and instrumentalists. There are way better instrumentalists than I am, but now I'm having to really reinvent myself as kind of a one-man band with like a loop pedal and stuff. <laughs> and this song is brand new. Yes, uh, 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 I may have played to friends here and there, but this is the first right. time coming out. So, but hey, it's part of being on on on. We are on the same uh, uh, storm, not on the same boat, but we are on the same storm. So, a yeah, new song for you guys. Hope you enjoy it. <laughs> well, thank you so much, and we put our demo down there um, for folks, PayPal. Um, so, uh, thank you so much for being with us tonight and we will, uh, see you at the map meeting on Friday. I hope looking forward to always. tomorrow for verse and chorus. Awesome. No, no, I am, uh, as much as I can participate, I'll be there. All right, my friend. Thank you so much. Uh, everybody that was Frederico seven, uh, one of our musicians advisory panelists, uh, so glad to have him on tonight. And of course, really glad to have on, um, Austin city mayor, um, right here. Here he is, uh, Steve Adler. Hello, Mayor. How are you this evening? Good. Thanks for inviting me back. Yeah. Great well, great. It's your first time on night shift. Well, you were you you and I were together two weeks ago for best seat in the house, um, and we had the, uh, the the lovely experience of getting to watch Hayes Carl and and Ray Benson and Shiny Ribs all play Willie Nelson songs. And <laughs> one of my favorite parts of the evening. Um, for folks that have never seen the backside of, of this um, software we use, we can see what the guests are doing even when they're not on in the studio live with us. And as we're all watching and listening to the music, Mayor Adler is just bopping around, just hanging out. He's really getting into it. Uh, so we really appreciate you. You, you are a fan of music. Um, and you, that's one of the reasons that you've stayed here in Austin uh, for so long. And I know we're all smiling here, but... You know, we're, we're, I do want to say it does seem like a million years ago that you announced the cancellation of South by Southwest. And that's obviously an incredible, difficult decision to come to on multiple levels, especially given what little was known about the virus at the time. Uh, but your decision, I believe, will be remembered as saving thousands of lives worldwide because it really served as a warning to the rest of the world that this virus was more serious than anyone had anticipated what were your priorities that you had in mind as you made that choice? Well, ultimately the priority that drove everything was, was, was keeping people from dying, uh, you know, public health and, and public safety. But boy, I tell you, it was, it was, a, it was a hard decision. Uh, you know, I had the things that I was looking forward to personally at, at South by, I had, uh, you know, 40 mayors from around the country coming in. I, I mean, everybody has their South by story. You know, I had, artists that uh, were going to be here that, uh, I mean, it just, it, everybody has their South by story. And, right. uh, I, you know, I was talking to mayors uh, in Asia and talking to mayors in Europe uh, as the virus was moving across and, and they were all telling me this is going to hit harder and faster than you think. Sure. Uh, a lot of people were warning me and didn't have any choice. And at the time, Seattle was considered really the first kind of hotbed in, in the United States. And there were several thousand people scheduled to come to Austin from Seattle. So again, 
you know, you really obviously did the right thing. Clearly, um, it's not been, you know, uh, a great thing for our, our economy, but there's that part is really out of your hands at this point. But since that time, you've worked closely with council members and stakeholders like us here at Austin, Texas Musicians, uh, to bring aid to our music community. Um, of course, you had item 91 that uh, council member Flanagan brought, um, and, and that kind of set the tone that the, the council was serious and really moving forward. Um, and then, if, as we know, last year, you helped create the first sustainable public funding for music in the city of Austin, now known as the Live Music Fund, uh, with the intent of investing in our commercial music economy. Uh, and recently, you've stood up to efforts to tap into that fund for anything other than its originally stated purpose. Why is that so important to you? Well, you know, you know, uh, kudos to Councilmember Flanagan for starting us off with that item 91 that basically said just just as as we were sheltering in place, uh, uh, recognizing the economic fallout that would come and saying, hey, we got to get relief to people uh, right away that, that that are hurting the most and can't sustain that loss. Uh, we've all tried to do that. I tried to protect that live music fund. Uh, trying to find the emergency relief money in, in other pots, but preserving that live music fund. Uh, music is so core to this city and the survival of this city, uh, but we've never done as good a job as we need to do in actually building out the, the, the industry vertical in this city. You know, this ought to be a city where you can be playing in your garage in a band at 16 and a club at, at uh, 21, 22, but also still in the industry at 45 and supporting a family. And, you know, we, we've never really built out that vertical in this city the way we needed to. There's never been the resources of the capital. Everybody's been so struggling on making sure that they're alive next week and, right. you know, that they can survive. Uh, so what we did is we we got uh, the the city to all start pushing toward doing the convention center expansion. Convention center expansion means we get more access to the hotel tax that we can't access without a convention center expansion. Right. Uh, but we said that when we access that, we're going to take a big chunk of that hotel tax money and we're going to put it just to helping to create that vertical. And even though there's a lot of pressure right now to help artists and we need to, and we're going to find that money in other places, right. we need to keep that industry money, that forward looking money protected because when we come out of this virus and we're building our new city, right. music's got to be core to it. So we're going to have the same institutional and infrastructure challenges, but we have to preserve our path out. Well, and you're doing that again because tonight, as we sit here yet again on another historic evening, as tomorrow, council is expected to pass no less than three major items to bring aid to our music communities. And let's be clear, such a dedicated uh, effort to bring aid to music is unprecedented anywhere else in the country. Um, and so let's dig into the first one, which is item 76. That is the administration of Austin's Music Disaster Relief Fund to bring immediate aid to musicians affected by the pandemic. Um, how did that come about and, and what do you know about how it will work? Well, Kathy Tovo was the lead sponsor on this. Uh, uh, every other council member, I think, probably wanted to, to co-sponsor and, and join on it. Uh, I think there were limited to officially naming four, but there were more uh, support than that. Uh, but basically it said, you know, we're getting emergency money out right away to uh, those communities and populations that are being hit the hardest. And in our community, that translates to communities of color. Uh, you know, the, the, the African-American community is being disproportionately hit, the Hispanic community. Uh, we have some people in those communities that aren't eligible for federal funds. Well, musicians uh, hit really hard too. Uh, you know, folks in the in the service industry, the, the baristas, everybody that, that makes for that industry. Uh, so we want to create a fund uh, that, that would help musicians and, and artists. And, and we created one out of that same emergency money that's coming from the federal government. So right. we initiated that before. And now they're coming back and saying, OK, we're ready to execute it. So tomorrow we'll say go. And, and can we just take a moment to acknowledge that not only are you working in this manner, um, with council, but you have really, as a council, really begun to task staff in a, in, a, in a way that's unprecedented as well. And they are 
really scrambling to get the work done. I spoke with Stephanie Bergara from um, the ATX Music uh, and Entertainment Division today and was just really telling her how much we appreciate the fact that they were able to take that original item from Tovo and move it really quickly. Um, they, it's, they, we've never seen anything like this funding wise happen this fast. And so I just really think it's important that we acknowledge those folks because they are working uh, very hard uh, to make this work. Um, uh, the other thing I wanted to say is, is you know, you introduced item 95, uh, which will be up tomorrow, uh, and that pushes the city to create a cultural trust to help grow Austin's commercial music sector. What does that potentially look like? So there are two items tomorrow, and talking about them together, I think, makes the most sense. Sure. Uh, so there's item 95, uh, which I'm bringing uh, with uh, the, the help and support of, uh, of uh, uh, co-sponsors, uh, uh, Council Member uh, Harper Madison and uh, uh, Council Member Kassar, uh, Kathy, uh, uh, and Kitchen. Uh, and then uh, Kathy has one. I think it has the same uh, uh, authors on it. But one of them, Kathy's, deals with, uh, again, relief, immediate relief uh, for the kind of the venues in the area in and around Red River and, and other places to make sure that, you know, we're not going to be able to preserve live music if we, if, we, if we lose all our live music venues. So we've got to be able to protect uh, them the same way we're protecting people in their homes right now. So there's the short-term immediate relief fix. That is primarily what, what, what Kathy's is dealing with. And then uh, mine, again, deals with the longer-term uh, aspects of this to make sure that as part of what we're doing now, we're looking to the future, that we're leveraging the present dollars and, and the present time and resources, not just we have to do we have to do more than walk and chew gun at the same time. <laughs> we've got to deal with the virus, we've got to deal with the crisis. But we also have to be working for when we're going to be moving out of this uh, to make sure that we come out of this quickly uh, and in a way that 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 saves uh, and, and sustains everybody. And one aspect of, of uh, both mine and Kathy's is looking at an economic development corporation or a cultural trust that would create an entity in the city that, that might be able to uh, own property or or be the landlord for, for venues uh, so that uh, we wouldn't be losing venues to, to redevelopment and the like. But right. we're thinking that if we can create a trust or a development corporation, we might be able to do things that are more creative than the city can just do on its own. Sure. Uh, so we're trying to put that in place. And probably quicker than the city could do on its own, right? Um, and that's something that, you know, as you probably know, I'm a member of the Live Music Fund Working Group, and uh -huh. that we have another meeting tomorrow. And certainly one of the things that we've been talking about is, you know, should the Live Music Fund be um, kind of housed into an EDC? You know, and that's that's uh, definitely something that we will continue to work out on the Live Music Fund Working Group. But the as you said, that ability to to act in a new and innovative way is so important because when we do come back from this, especially as musicians and music business owners, um, we can't really afford to do things the way that we used to do them. And we need to depend on our city um, and the council to essentially set it up so that when this does happen again, and, and it very well could happen again, that we don't have to scramble like we did this time to create these things, these programs can be in place and ready to go uh, again. Um, with that- and It's the city doing it, it's a city doing it, and that's important, but I tell wow. you, thank you for your work because it's it's it, it's, it's people like you and, and Graham and, and the whole music commission and the, and the arts commission. Uh, right. There are a lot of artists and musicians and, and, and volunteers. I mean, you're not getting paid for that work. Uh, but it's taken a lot of time, and, and it's a real gift to, to not only other artists, but it's a gift to the community. So thank well, you for that. I, it means so much to hear you say that. It is a real labor of love, and, and I do believe that if you love music, then you have to take action, you know, and that is the, the, the core premise of what Austin, Texas Musicians was really built on. And that leads us to our last question, which is that Austin, Texas Musicians really does believe in the power of advocacy. Uh, from Blues on the Green to Austin Music Foundation's uh, Feel the Love event, you always seem to find the time to show up and speak up for music. In fact, tonight, 
you literally came from your own broadcast. Uh, you do a thing every night around seven o'clock called Got a Minute. And you kind of recap the day and talk about the numbers. And in many cases, the grim numbers of deaths rising and, and people getting sick. Um, but why is it important for musicians to organize and share our voice at City Hall? You know, organizing it, it equates to power. Uh, it equates to, to making sure that the priorities and the interests of the music community get translated into the priorities of the budgets uh, that the city council adopts. Uh, you know, this, this, this um, a fund that was created, uh, the Live Music Fund, the first real capital expenditure of the government into the music industry happened uh, because we were able to defeat that ballot proposition where some people were trying to, I think, were trying to, to kill the convention center expansion, which sure. is what we came up with that dollars. And, and one of the reasons why we were successful at the ballot box was because community groups, uh, music groups in the community organized. Uh, you know, and started lobbying everybody that was coming into bars. We're <laughs> <laughs> you're going to catch everybody that way. Uh, yeah, right. that effort, and 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 the and the music community earned it uh, by virtue of organizing and putting in the, the the shoulder power for years. Other groups have done that, right. uh, and, they, and they've seen more money coming out of the budget because they right. did that. Uh, right. So it's about time that the that the music and the arts community. Uh, organizing as well to demand uh, a fair share at the table. Well, thank you for saying that. And and that is the truth. Is And that's one of the things that when we started Austin, Texas Musicians just about a year ago as an official advocacy group, one of the things that I said to our, our Facebook group members, um, and I still say this, is musicians alone, just musicians in Austin, outnumber both the fire and the police departments and you know that we have that many musicians in town and our voice is very powerful and we do drive the economic engine that that makes austin so cool and that brings really billions of dollars to austin in tax revenue and without us that that is something that we would you would have to look to property taxes and other things to get that so folks watching at home you got to support musicians if you want Austin to stay cool and if you want Austin to grow long term. And Mayor Adler understands that, obviously. And we're so grateful for you taking some time to come out and talk to us tonight. I really appreciate all the work that you're doing. I appreciate the work you're doing. I appreciate you getting some musicians, uh, some attention here uh, while everybody's not at it. Hey, if you go to the bars, open it up later this week. Uh, you know, social distance. Try to stay six feet away. I uh, don't get in people's faces. You can really protect them better if you wear a face covering. Uh, so everybody should try to do that too, but be safe. And Thank you so much. I really appreciate you being here tonight, Mayor. Take care. All right, bye-bye. Uh, Mayor Adler, uh, such a pleasure to have him on the show. Um, you know, again, you know, one of the things that, you know, he said right there at the end, if you're going to go out this weekend, um, you know, please wear a face mask, you know, um, my husband's immunocompromised because he's he's asthmatic and, you know, we can't go anywhere without face masks on. We, we honestly try not to go anywhere that we don't have to. Um, and, you know, on, on the one hand, it's it's um, it really sucks. But on the other hand, I know that what we're doing is caring for other people. And we have to remember that it's not just about us. This is not just about our privilege to walk around without a mask on. There are way uh, people that are way worse off than we are that are that are scared, um, that are sick, that could get worse. So please take care of yourselves. If you are taking gigs out there, people, remember, don't take any free gigs ever. At this point in our in in, in Austin's history, you know, yes, that that's a thing of the past. From now on. Let's make sure that we're not taking free gigs, that we're really valuing ourselves. Our art is work. Music means business. Get yourself signed up with the, uh, the IRS. Make sure that you're uh, all good in your legal standing and go out and actually build your business. You can start right now with live streaming. And then when things start to come back up, then you'll get back out there and your fans will be ready more than ever 
to get out there again. So thanks again to everybody who was on the show tonight. Uh, my name is Nakia. This is Austin, Texas Musicians uh, Facebook page and YouTube page. And of course, we do this every Wednesday night um, at seven o'clock. Tomorrow on Verse and Chorus, which is the private um, discussion that we do inside of our Facebook group, we will be talking about bars that are reopening, uh, venues that are saying that they won't reopen yet. And we're also going to be talking more about the musicians professional application that we put out at atxmusicians.org. Here's a quick um, reminder of what versus chorus is like, and we'll see you next time. The conversation around live streaming and how much should a band or a solo artist be paid to play a live stream. I quote my normal rate because I've, I've decided that that's what I'm worth. What can we do in order to portray ourselves to buyers, you know, like, hey, you, you love Austin, so you, you, part of that culture is to support Austin artists. You're not wearing a wig, right? This is your actual. Well, no, I just got out of the shower, actually.